Let us start our lesson and we are going to finish our discussion on kinematics and start talking about differential kinematics today. Differential kinematics is, a, let me say, a, a big topic in sense of material and it's also one of the most important Definitely for the students of mechanical engineering is the most important because you are going to finish as a theory here, actuator and sensors, okay? But in practice, you are going to finish uh, here, trajectory planning. So this, uh, I will give you the exact schedule, but for the moment, uh, just uh, all the lessons, uh, you have to follow all the lessons. Of course, we just started. Okay, so let's finish talking about kinematics. And as we said, kinematics is the relationship between the joint position and the end effect or position orientation. We uh, developed a systematic way to build, to uh, uh, compute the direct kinematics. It means that now we have uh, the possibility, we have, uh, I mean, the theoretical uh, knowledge and uh, we will have uh, also the, the practical uh, capability very soon to compute position orientation and the end effector by starting from the joint positions. Okay, as I told you, uh, the convention that we are going to use uh, is named Dire uh, Dynamic Tartenberg uh, Convention, and it is not the only one. There are several uh, around because it's a convention, so anyone can decide to, to put the frame the, the way he considers more appropriate. And actually, there are two Dynatarb convention, one and two. So this is the number one. So uh, as usual, uh, uh, we always have to 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 uh, pay attention when we receive material reports or. Uh, or code programs from the others on what kind of choices they made on the variables, okay? And we just uh, introduce a couple of definitions with joint and operational spaces. And uh, I underline the fact that, in, in, in fact, robotics is all about this consideration. Our control objective is to move the position orientation of the end effect because this is uh, where we have uh, our um, application. We want to, to, to weld, we want to send glue, we want to interact with the environment, so we need to, to move a tool around in the, in the space. But our motors are here. Okay? So everything, every problem, let me say, starts from uh, this consideration. We haven't discussed about kinematic calibration. I've just told you that it's kind of identification that is needed when you buy a new robot in order to improve your uh, accuracy and repeatability, especially in uh, the industrial settings. But we, we skipped this topic. And now we are going to discuss a little bit about the inverse kinematic problem. Okay. Basically, this draw represents the inverse kinematics problem. So the direct kinematics is this one. I do have uh, knowledge of the joint position in a vector of dimension n with the, the values of the joints, and I do want to compute position orientation of the end effect which is the same if I say I want to, to compute the homogeneous transformation matrix from the end effector to the base. The concept is the same, okay? They're equivalent representation. Now, the inverse kinematics is, well, the inverse operation. I do have uh, the value of uh, a position orientation in the Cartesian space, in the operational space, and I do want to solve, I do want to know, I do want to compute 
I'm using different verbs, the joint position. Now, there is a, a very significant mathematical difference between those two problems. Direct kinematics is a systematic or serial chain of rigid links. Systematic means that I only have to follow a procedure and I got the result. I can make it a bug or whatever, a typo, but there is nothing really conceptual. Inverse kinematics can exhibit as a problem, as a mathematical problem, uh, some strange situations. I'll show you a draw in order to in order to visualize a little bit what I'm talking about. This is a base frame, X, Y, Z. And now, let me say that uh, I do a planar robot. Let us consider a planar robot of uh, three links, for example. And uh, I do a sign X, Y, and Z for the end effect. Now, what is the solution for a three-link planar robot. Let us imagine that uh, this is the linked length, okay? Well, first of all, do I care about position only or position orientation? Let us make it first fit position orientation. So this is the, the final, the final uh, um, uh, required orientation and let us imagine that uh, this is the last link okay so very easily now very intuitively without any mathematics i i recognize that there are two possibilities for the other two joints, okay? In both cases, I reach the same position orientation for the end effect. Now, if I care only at the position and not at the orientation, you can imagine that even here, you can arrive with any kind of, uh, any kind of orientation and thus you have a really infinite possibility. So in the first, let me, in this case, I do have uh, two alternative solutions, okay? Because I can go from here or from here to that position. And then this is fixed because of uh, the assigned orientation for the end effect. I mean, also I have uh, no solution, and this is very easy to understand, if I just assign my desired end effector out of the, you know, out of the workspace, there are zero solution. So I can have uh, zero solutions, I can have one solution, I can have multiple solutions, I can have infinite solutions. So the inverse kinematic problem is not as simple, let me say, as the direct kinematics. And now we will uh, 
address one possible way to afford the problem today and we will discover that is not the best way to do it but we are going to do it as well we are going to to try in order to understand why in order to solve the inverse kinematics we will switch to velocities so differential kinematics and to algorithmic solutions okay. direct kinematics is uh, symbolically achievable i just make my symbolic computation and i do have uh, the expressions for position orientation can be awful ugly to to read difficult to read but i can i can have it in this case the symbolic computation is possible only for simple structures and we will see it now and then in order to solve it we need to move on uh, different uh, uh, mathematical tool so we will uh, start with some uh, let me say algebraic and geometric solutions that are uh, obtained uh, here it is written by intuition well let me say it is obtained by someone that just i mean tried to solve the uh, equations and then the numerical techniques that will be the object of our next lessons okay this is a, a possible way to solve a three link planar robot and let us see a little bit how this can be afforded i will not go into all the mathematical det details because, of, because this is not the way we are going to follow okay so i just want you to have uh, a close idea of what is the i mean the the, the attempt, what are the attempts to solve it at in at uh, the kinematic level without going to the Okay, so this is the same draw as we saw yesterday. One, two, and three joints. Theta one, theta two, and theta three are the three degrees of freedom. Here I have uh, the zero frame. Uh, well, here I don't have the base frame. The base frame can be everywhere, but the zero frame uh, is... Uh, decided according to the DH convention, then Tartemann convention. In this case, it's here, but it is fixed. The zero frame doesn't move, okay? So frame one is here, frame two is here, frame three is here. Now, how do I compute the solution? As I said, I don't want to go into the details, but just give you an idea. Okay, I have to make some Configure uh, some um, uh, considerations that are specific to this structure. And this is why it is intuition. I can notice that uh, the orientation of the um, last frame, the end effector frame, is given simply by the sum of the three joints. And this is true only for this very simple robotic structure. Okay? It's a, it's a very specific consideration. Theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is the angle of frame 3 with respect to frame 0. Then, now I use this uh, W that is a uh, wrist. This is kind of wrist for a planner. I define this as a position. And uh, I do notice... Uh, that uh, by basic uh, uh, trigonometry i can compute uh, the position in x and y of the of this uh, point in this way if i look here 
pay y uh, x w y x is given by the position minus the projection of the last link on the x direction that is this one and this is equal to this expression here trigonometry then well then I just play with the trigonometric, trigonometric equation and I try to obtain uh, to isolate theta 1 or theta 2 so this is a an algebraic solution of uh, non-linear equations because theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 appears within trigonometric function okay and uh, we know from this kind of, uh, of um, uh, mathematical problems that there is not a systematic way to solve it. Uh, part is intuition, part uh, is experience of the solver, of the person, a human that solves it. So it's really left to do to some attempts. In this case, I can extract cosinus of theta 2. We, we remember the notation C with the subscript 2 is cosinus of theta 2. Oh, well, maybe, maybe you can uh, recognize it by yourself. Uh, do you understand what kind of operation has been done on equation, on the second and third equation? Here I have uh, no, the square of this plus the square of this. So I squared the second, the third, and sum together in order to use uh, the basic properties of a sinus and cosinus function, such as, for example, uh, the square of sinus plus the square of cosinus is one. Okay, this is what has been done. But I don't care. I mean, this is just uh, this is just uh, an, the intuition that someone had. And so he said, okay, I isolate cosinus of theta two, I isolate sinus of theta two, and now I can implement the atan two function that uh, we already met. Okay. A little bit more complex uh, uh, composition of equation two and three, and I can have theta one, and then uh, if I know theta one and theta two, the orientation of the end effector is uh, a uh, input of the problem, and I have theta three. Okay. Geometric solution. Here, I have uh, a nicer plot of what I did on the board a few minutes ago. If I just play around with the geometry, I, I discover that I have two solutions. Of course, here too, I have two solutions. Okay, here there is plus or minus the square root. They are both valid. Those two solutions correspond to those two in the geometric solution. And again, I'm not going to the details. Because this is a very simple robot and in this case I can find a solution it's not complex but I can find a, a solution now I may have a problem if I run an automatic control in order to decide which of the two solutions is the one to take to an, into account in my control loop because if I have multiple solutions well, I need some uh, additional code in order to understand which one of the two solutions is better and uh, which one of the two solutions, for example, has been used in the previous sample. Now, if I have a, a spherical wrist, the spherical wrist 
it's quite convenient to make inverse kinematics because uh, the spherical wrist, uh, let me say, it's easier to solve, it's easy to solve more or less. And again, I'm not going to the details, but I'll just give you an idea on how it's possible to solve. Uh, in this case too, I put my attention on the, the position on the wrist. And then, without going to the details, I compute the position on the wrist by resorting to Q1, 2, and 3, so the first three joints. And I solve the inverse kinematics for that and we will do it. Then I compute the rotation from 0 to 3. In that way, I can compute the rotation from 3 to 6 and solve, of course, this is the inverse kinematics for the orientation. Okay? Basically, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me try with the board. Uh, while I'm uh, erasing this, uh, I would like uh, your feedback also. Ah, okay. He, he also raised the. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, I lost the PDF. Okay. I will do, uh, this is the first time that I use, so let me try. I would like your uh, um, feedback uh, also on the teaching aspect, okay? If you prefer different ways to, to, to do it, what is it? Uh, if you prefer the blackboard, uh, I, can, uh, I can adapt for this year without excess, let me see, too many problems. Okay. What is the page? 83. succede qualcosa ah ok ok no, so the, the synchronization is not slow as I thought but I have to finish the operation ok so now let, let, uh, let us uh, see a little bit from the graphical aspect uh, the idea is that I am able to, I need to first uh, isolate the inverse kinematics for this point here, the wrist, and uh, for position only. And this, is one, this one is only function of uh, this joint, this joint, and this joint, okay? Position only is not affected by this one, the position is clearly function only of Q1, Q2, and Q3. Then I compute the orientation, uh, sorry, I compute the orientation, okay? And this orientation here is what I need in order to compute then, uh, sorry, then R36. So, if you see here, I have R, I'm sorry, uh, just one second from, for the students remotely connected. Okay. 
Are you there? Okay, yes. Uh, as I said, please turn on the camera so that I can see your faces, okay? I prefer it. Except uh, the one that has uh, a desktop without camera. Okay, do you recognize where this uh, comes from? If I write uh, the composition of rotation matrices in current frame, and I need to isolate this guy here. Okay, and this is done by left multiplication of R three zero zero minus minus one. Uh, sorry, minus one. And then I can isolate this guy here. Okay. In this way, I separate and I decompose my inverse kinematics. And I solved first the position of the wrist for K1, K2, and K3. And then I use as input R36 and I decompose and I solve, uh, I sorry, and I solve for the uh, three, four, and six joints. This is what is written here. Okay. Uh, yes, here. That's. I'm sorry. I, I was. Uh, I was a little bit uh, excitant because yes, here, here there is uh, clearly a mistake in the sense that here there is a transpose. If I apply this one clearly, let me let me do the the final operation. In this case, r zero three minus one. This is uh, equal to. R03 transpose. Okay, because for the rotation matrices, inverse is the transpose. Or I can also write, and it's exactly the same, R30 is the same. So I apply the multiplication. And then here I have uh, simplifications, and, and so this one. Now, this is equal to this one that is the one that is on the on the slides i was hesitant because i forgot the transpose and in my equations <laughs> it was it was wrong obviously but now everything is nice okay so 
So this is the idea. It can be implemented only if you have uh, a uh, sorry uh, only if you have a um, spherical wrist equipped robot so the solution is separated so now i can compute the solution for a spherical robot and this is the really ugly uh, way to do it of course uh, ugly is is just a stupid joke I mean, we don't care if it's nice or not this is a a way to compute the position systematically, and it's fine. If the whole instruction is not the Stanford one, but is the anthropomorphic robot, then uh, we also have uh, the possibility to find a solution, which is quite interesting. Uh, I will skip the equations, and I will go directly on the graphical interpretation of the four admissible solution and i will try to and i will try to to bring this on Okay, let me discuss graphically the four possible solutions. If you look at these uh, four plots, the joint now they have been drawn with uh, half of the cylinder black and half white in order to visualize the different solutions let us consider the first one this is uh, the position i uh, I need to compute the inverse kinematics only for the position because I decoupled the problem. Okay, and this position with respect to this point here. Okay, this is the position. Now I can notice that here I have uh, the black part of the cylinder on the left, on the right hand side. Here the black, let me say, looking downward, and here looking upward. I can reach uh, the same exact position and here, uh, sorry, the same exact position here if I have this guy here in the same right hand looking configuration, but now those two are located uh, sorry, are located differently, okay? And this is the same uh, um, double solution of the planar because this is a planar. When I, when I just uh, project it on a plane, what I'm looking at is uh, this, this is the black, and those are the two possible solutions. Can you visualize it? Okay. The same for the other two, but just changing the first link looking on the left hand side. So there are po four possible solutions. Uh, they are mathematical or equivalent. I need uh, somehow a code in order to, to understand the difference. I need to contextualize. Uh, I need to, to, to study the application. So it's now mathematically it's solved. I'm sorry, but I just, okay. For the spherical wrist, uh, it's easier because the spherical wrist uh, has a mathematical property that we didn't go into the detail, 
by which I mean the joint are really close to an orientation representation and thus I can extract them very easily from the it is very uncommon to find a pure spherical, spherical wrist on a, on a robot because it is difficult from the mechanical aspect to design three rotational joint whose uh, uh, rotation axis intersect in one point. So the reason why the world is not plenty of spherical wrist uh, due to the fact that it's quite easy to compute the inverse kinematics is that it's difficult from the mechanical aspect. Okay, so let us just see a recap of the solutions for the inverse kinematic problem. If we, we care only at the position, if uh, we have uh, less than three degrees of freedom uh, in the robot, of course, uh, we have zero solutions. And that's trivial, because if I have a planner, and I assign X, Y, and Z also, arbitrarily, I have zero solution. If I have uh, exactly three degrees of freedom in my robot, I may have uh, solutions infinite number. We saw a, an example with two different solutions. In some part of the world space, it means that in some other, I may have one solution or zero. If I have a robot uh, with uh, more than three degrees of freedom, I may have uh, infinite solutions. And this is only for the position, but it's very, it's very simple. Let me uh, draw a, a snake-like robot, so a, a robot, a planar robot with a lot of link. Position only, you can reach it. This is uh, two case, but you can reach it with uh, infinite possible configuration. Okay. If I'm interested in uh, position plus orientation, then, uh, well, it's the same, but with six in the first column, in the column of the degrees of freedom. If I assign arbitrarily position orientation and my robot does not have 60 degrees of freedom, well, except for some uh, uh, specific cases, I have zero solution. We, with a robot on, of uh, six degrees of freedom, well, I may have a finite, a finite number of solutions. And if my robot is uh, intrinsically redundant, so more than six degrees of freedom, I may have in, an infinite number of solutions. Okay? Okay. So, we have done uh, with the inverse kinematic. And uh, as you can notice, this has been done only for very uh, simple, uh, very few uh, robotic structures. It's not easy to generalize. So we are not satisfied with this way to solve the inverse kinematic problem. Okay? And we have done it because uh, I want you to, to, to touch with your hands the fact that the inverse kinematics at the kinematic level is not properly solved. We need to move to the differential kinematics. And we just make uh, a break, but before making the break, I'm just anticipating a little bit uh, what we are going to do. Differential kinematics is the relationship between joint velocities and and the factor linear and angular velocity a new conceptual problem arise 
because the angular velocity is something that is a little bit uh, subtle, it's not trivial, and it's something that uh, you probably haven't studied in your career, except maybe the mechanical engineer students. And this is something that we are going to do. Uh, we are going to, to start studying today. So first of all, I uh, stop my presentation and I uh, just uh, break for 10 minutes. So we are going to come back at 11 and stop recording. <laughs> 